There is a country on the west coast of South America that confounds every expectation. Covered in rainforest and dominated by wildlife, French Guiana is home to something out of this world. I undertook an extraordinary journey from Paris to the capital Cayenne to witness the launch of a satellite that would start a new era in Earth observation. French Guiana is a hotpot of culture, home to a sparse population of just 250,000 on a territory one-third the size of France. Among them, there are Creole, Europeans, Native Americans, slave descendants, and Hmong. We traveled from south to north, east to west, by boat, plane, and car. Along the way, we met some of the most extraordinary creatures on this planet. This is Future Proof in French Guiana. Spectacular, isn't it? These are three models of the sort of rockets that are launched in Kourou by Ariane Espace. Now this is the Ariane 5, over there is the Vega, and this here is the Soyuz, the Russian spaceship that we will see launch the Sentinel-1 rocket on Wednesday. The European Space Agency's base is in Kourou, a city to the north of capital KN, and it's enormous. As far as the eye can see, in every direction, this is the Guiana Space Center, all 700 square kilometers of it. The Vega launcher in the background is just one of three launchers on the site that's about five times the size of Dublin. The base is a number one priority for French security and is policed heavily by French legionnaires. It's not just a likely target for terrorists. Space exploration can be hazardous. Each space rocket is like an enormous flying bomb and it's Alex Agape's job to make sure everyone's safe. So we evacuate some, uh, some areas and also we compute a launch corridor in order to make sure that no debris or no toxic gas will, will uh, arrive on the population. This is the Jupiter Room, aka Mission Control. We're here to see the launch of the Sentinel-1A satellite, which will give us a greater insight into the impact of climate change on our planet. Barry Fennell is the European Space Agency's Irish representative for the Copernicus program. Barry, tell us about the Copernicus program. What's it all about? And the Copernicus program is in recognition that the Earth is precious and we need to protect the environment. And what we're interested in doing is gathering information to tell us about what's going on in the Earth systems itself. What sort of applications does this information have? Well, we know, John, Jonathan, for instance, harmful algae blooms and jellyfish blooms can wipe out salmon farms in a 24-hour period. Recently, in fact, a nuclear power plant in Sweden had to shut down because the jellyfish blocked the water intake used to cool down the reactors. Wow. So if you can provide information and predict when these events are going to occur, that's really valuable information for the utility sector. Ireland is a particularly cloudy country and, and the, this radar satellite will be able to give us a view of the country that we haven't had before. Yeah, it's a really powerful initiative because on Central one for example, you have a device called a synthetic aperture radar. Essentially what that means is that you, you can record data through cloud. Really valuable information, for instance, if you want to understand where a vessel is in the water, you want to understand where an oil slick is, for instance, and the Irish Coast Guard, the Irish Naval Services will use this sort of information. Sea level rise, global temperature rise, for example, and again, you can archive this sort of data which is really important to understand the effect of climate change on the environment. It was time to meet the rocket that we had come here to see. This is the Russian Soyuz, 90% of which is just fuel. A mixture of liquid oxygen and kerosene will blast this beast out of our atmosphere at a speed of seven kilometers a second. This rocket is the real deal, the original Soyuz took Sputnik into space in 1957 and the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin, a few years later. 
At the moment, it doesn't have all its stages and it's not filled with propellant, which is a good thing because it's extremely toxic. You can see the three stages there behind me. There's four boosters surrounding the core stage and then there's another stage at the top. They'll all separate as this rocket launches into the atmosphere and into our skies. We're about seven hours before liftoff and as you can see, the Soyuz is now covered by the gantry, which protects it and allows access to the various levels. On the top you can see the fairing that contains the payload and it gets fueled from underneath. In about six hours time they're going to get rid of the gantry and allow the arms to open up like a tulip ready for liftoff. Francois Barreau is vice president of the Soyuz program for Ariane Espace who operate the base. He explains that the liftoff isn't actually controlled by man but machine. You told me that there's no buttons pressed for the launch. I imagine that when you got to zero someone put their finger on a big red button, that doesn't happen? No, in fact, we try to avoid to put, the, put the, the finger on the button because if we have to press a button, it is to stop something. Everything is automatic, uh, there are automatic launch sequence, and uh, if everything goes well, nobody pushes any button. We're at the heart of the Space Centre with about six and a half hours to go. The flight commander there who looks after the entire launch is here, and that key over there, and that's green, that means we're good to go. We headed out to Colibri, a viewing site a full safe six kilometers away from the launch pad. Allumage triétage à tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top et décollage. It was beautiful, loud but stunning, a roar from humanity into space and beyond. Using radar, Sentinel-1A will provide extraordinarily accurate information about the movement and position of the Earth's surface. Piracy in the seas, oil slicks, Earth tremors and potential building collapse. Radar imagery will help governments to better predict and prevent disaster. at the Calibri viewing site and about six kilometers away is a Soyuz rocket that left about 26 minutes ago. This is the public viewing site that contains members of the various space agencies and engineers who for the past 26 minutes have been biting their teeth waiting for the all go. It took about four minutes longer than it should have but we now know that the Sentinel has deployed correctly and the real science can begin. Over the next few years, the European Space Agency will roll out the rest of the Sentinel satellites that will give us an unparalleled view of life here on Earth and hopefully save lives. We're about to really get to know our planet for the first time.